Good morning, ladies and gents. Sorry about the quick stream hiccup there. Had to uh, plug in my microphone of all silly things to forget to do. So I am here. Don't worry. We will get our game dev on. Just a matter of uh, figuring out what to do. <laughs> so the thing I wanted to add in today, we kind of been working on a bunch of different components, getting things plugged in all over the place, getting new mechanics pushed in. I'm just going to do some detail work today on some of that stuff. Specifically, I want to work on getting uh, attacks to be a little more fully featured. Um, specifically, I'd love for enemies to be able to do AoE and also to do partial party attacks, so to pick more than one target. And finally, we'll see if we can't get them to do things like um, emit a particle effect or do something specific when the attack is happening. Because obviously, you know, if they go to cast a spell, their hands go out and then suddenly somebody just takes damage. It doesn't look or sound nearly as good as when, uh, when you actually see particle effects, you know, eschew from their hands when I do that kind of stuff. Yes, Lemony Fresh, that was almost the shortest stream ever. Mostly it was just, you have to stop the stream in order to uh, turn on a microphone that you had not had plugged in before. Whoopsies. Um, so, so, I've already got a scripted fight set up, and I'm going to go so far as to grab, I have some prefabs for some monsters, and I've already lost the, there it is. Uh, and I'm just gonna dump some demon imps and a grunt into place. Now, these guys aren't fully set up. One thing to note is that they have no character uh, information attached to them. So let's go ahead and attach that to each of these. Um, we're just going to call them imps for now. They're going to be pretty freaking pathetic. Um, let's just say they start with uh, threes, no not 33, threes across the board. Um, and just to make sure they can hit things, we'll increase their coordination somewhat. Give them a pretty sad amount of base health. Um, let's say, I don't know, eight. And they're worth like 24 experience a piece. Great. Simple, doesn't require much work. Uh, and that's kind of the nice thing about a lot of this stuff is that uh, I can't help but notice that some of the, uh, the scripts here are kind of small and nice, easy to plug into things. Uh, now, the one thing I did notice is that everybody who is a character should probably have combat animation stuff. Mm, I don't know, actually, if that's true. I need to think about that. Uh, but the other thing I do need is that I need to have his animator selected when I dig through the rest of this stuff. Because without the animator, I don't know what the, uh, the names for certain things are. By things, sorry, I'll be detailed, uh, the names of certain variables inside the animator. So we have take damage is his damage variable, and death is his death variable. And he does have a spawn state, so we'll put that one in as well. And let's just uh, do the same thing for the grunt. Oh, the grunt already has information. It. And he's got attacks and everything. Okay, never mind. Let's just finish up with what we need for this guy then. Um, let's give him a combat action. Ooh, another thing I want to tack onto combat systems that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, adding effects to people and to spells. So I cast a, you know a noxious gas spell and I'd like it to nauseate everybody in the party or I cast sleep and it should cause some people to pass out. Obviously we don't want them casting spells as often as they attack so I want to make sure that spells are either like a once or twice per fight or that they are just extremely rare in comparison to all the rest of the attacks because right now it evenly distributes the attacks across the entire list of 
uh, possible attacks. So we need to make sure that we kind of gather that information together and then say, okay, well, now that we've gathered it, let's keep it in a probability-based array. Uh, okay, so... Um, Uh, swipes, I think, is the description. He'll have a pretty sweet hit bonus with a pretty pathetic amount of weapon damage, and that will be uh, attack one. And for now, that's the only one I'm going to put on there. Um, he, I think, looks ready. At least for now, for his, you know, first big fight. Interesting. So I can't help but notice that I tried to put the grunt in the middle here, and if we look at the grid node with the fight attached to it, wherever that is, oh, it's removed itself because uh, obviously this fight is happening. Um, if you look at this, it goes imp grunt int. I wonder why. Let's put imp. I'm curious. Nope, now he's on the outside. Now he's on the other outside. Oh, I understand what's going on here. Okay, it should go like this. Got it. Don't mind me. All right, cool. So, and if we do, we get in a fight like we normally would, then it becomes very obvious. Oh. I can't click on them. More things we have to remember each time we create enemies. They need a bounding box of some kind. They need some kind of collider. Otherwise, you can't click on them, obviously. Put a box in the wrong place around him. Uh, I think I'm missing some of him. Just a little bit, though. Uh, bring it up a little higher, a little lower, just right. Okay, cool. There we go. That doesn't look bad. Cool. And I'm just going to shift this all the way up to the top. Mostly because I like to have things not in alpha order, but I like to have my Unity components at the top and then my custom components underneath. All right, let's uh, reapply this to the Demon Imp and get back to that fight. Yeah, I spend probably far too long working on my state machine uh, layout. Um, and yeah, it is a pain since they don't line up to the grid at all. It just bothers the heck out of me, but it's okay. I will persevere. <laughs> and it's good to see they're taking hits and... Uh, Rebounding the way they should. That was a really fast swipe. Gosh, these guys are completely, like, twitchy, and they're actually kind of hilarious. I absolutely love it. Okay, so, cool. They're playing as they should. Now, in terms of getting them to cast a spell, or do something that affects more than just the group that they are attached to, Let's bring up the combat action and see if we can't add some more uh, interesting things to the action stats. Like, eventually, uh, range is going to come into this, or so I hope. But at the same time, uh, I really... Ooh, I didn't mark anything in here. Well, I guess I don't need to mark a ton. But just because I want to... Just so I know who's calling what, mostly. Uh, okay, so action stats. We've got the description, the hit bonus, the weapon damage. 
Uh, let's also go so far as to uh, use an enumeration, I think. I'm trying to think of like the different types of spell. Pretty much everything is either single target, range target, or everybody. So, hmm. I think spells might already have this. Yeah, so first off, this is going to switch. Because it's kind of silly that we have an enumeration and it does nothing but uh, cater to one usage. Actually, Huh. So my thoughts here are I could bring up a second set of target enumerations and that would essentially allow my spells and my attacks to differ in terms of who they can target. Uh, and let's just look at very quickly while it's still in mind. Um, if I look at items and look at weapon items. Okay, weapon items. Weapons can only currently target a single thing at a time. You'll note that they have no... Oh, weapon. Yeah, aside from attack type and other things. They don't actually have anything else attached to them that allows you to hit more than one target at a time. Which for a weapon makes sense. Hmm. Okay, so for now, I'm going to use spell target. And what we're going to do is eventually we'll swap it over to something else, probably. If the two start to diverge further, then I'm just going to make an enum a new enumeration. Um... If they don't diverge at all, leaving it at spell target is not a bad thing. It simply means that I have to uh, figure out how to get this thing to target a lot of people at once. Uh, and that's possibly difficult, possibly not so much. Um, also, we're going to want some kind of um, particle effect. Hey! Um, is that actually true? Do I always... Yeah, for now, let's leave it like that. This might turn into a reference instead of a template, which is why I'm not appending the word template to the variable name, at least not yet. Okay, so, uh, don't care about spells, want to deal with this. So. Hmm. Yeah, there's so much customization that can go into combat actions. We can have them yell things in combat, we can have them cast spells, we can have them use items. Um, having a bunch of stuff like that makes combat so much more interesting. When it says that, you know, uh, an enemy uses something of a certain type, um, that evokes... A world that's deeper than just, oh look, these are punching bags for my characters to beat up. And that's part of why I'm sitting here so long, staring at this and not just getting the one thing done. There's a lot of possibilities, and I want to make sure that I don't preclude any of those possibilities with the feature I'm adding. So, target. Right? Simplest thing we can do. Uh, we already know that we auto-pick a single target every time they attack. So it shouldn't be terribly hard for us to uh, hop in and see here. We do that, we do that, we wait. Um, hmm.
set that to true, I also want to, if particle effect is not null, and then at the end of the whole thing, I'll have to figure out a timing for turning this off. But we'll figure out the timing on that later. I just wanted to slap that in for, for cutesiness sake. All right, uh, single target. So if we're attacking a single target, what the code we have in place is great. Uh, what we need to do is gather up more targets if more targets should be allowed. So for example, um, if the target, actually, here's a good way to do this. Um, right now we're being passed a single character. What I'm going to do <clears throat> is we're going to, for each character, we're going to create a character array, call it targets. And at bare minimum, we're going to put in our character target. Uh, is that wasteful? Allocating like that? The upside is it's a slow allocation. So if you think about this, it, this is every time a monster attacks. That's going to be every two to three seconds. So that's not going to be too bad. Um, still, I don't know if I want to be allocating like that. I'll think on it in a moment. Executron, hello, how's it going? Um, what's going on today? Today we've got uh, a little bit of polish going into the enemy attacks. And by polish, I actually mean more features. So right now, uh, uh, an enemy attack can only hit a single target and can only play a single animation. Uh, what I intend on doing is having them uh, be able to do things like add particle effects, attack multiple people at once, uh, cast spells, use items, all this stuff that I'd like to add into uh, basic enemy attacks. The problem is there's just so much I don't think I'm going to be able to get it all done today. Uh, but we'll see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Here's how it's going to go down. Uh, if, if the target is a swoop. Yeah. Uh, if it's a single person, then we don't need to worry too much about this. Uh, and we're just going to say, well, and I had insert turned on. Whoops. Oh, I have target used in two different ways. Um, There we go, better. If the attack target, and then we pass in the target. Um, I just wanna look at where I pass in the character very quickly. Um, <clears throat> So for each, while we're processing combat, if the participant is a player character, great. Okay, here's the random target acquisition. Um, so the one thing I don't like is the fact that the target is being chosen by the combat window, even though the combat window has nothing to do with uh, characters who are currently like in the fight. You know what? I'm just going to pass it the entire initiative list because the initiative list is going to be filled with characters who are still in the fight. So that allows me to do two things. One, it allows me to remove people from combat fairly easily. If they're not in the initiative list, they can't be attacked. The other thing I can do is that uh, this allows me to pick from all available targets as opposed to hunt for um, 
player characters or other things specifically. Uh, now, my only worry about passing in an initiative list is that the initiative list is a mixture of monsters and characters, and therefore it's actually kind of difficult to pick them apart. I'd actually have to iterate through and pick them apart every time one of them attacks. Now, granted, at most we're probably looking at, what, 20 characters in a fight? Maybe? Like, that, that is a huge fight. 20 different characters. Say there's four of them are player characters, so that's 16 monsters. That's insane numbers. Um, so it's not like the iteration's going to hurt. It's mostly that the storage of information is going to be what hurts. Um, and what I'm more... Eh, Where's that get available player characters? Okay, so this one doesn't do much better, it seems like. Um, is anyone else using this function? No. Okay, so let's get rid of this function, or at least until I'm certain I don't need it. Let's just comment it out. I hate deleting things mid... Um, mid-task, because sometimes it turns out, oop, you do need it. Um, you know what? Screw it. If I need it, I can pull it out of the diff. Uh, where'd that function go? <laughs> there it is. Get rid of that. Uh, target does not exist. That's fine. Uh, we're going to pass in the list of enemies bizarrely enough. But that should be the only thing else that we need to pass in. So the opponent list, just so if something goes awry, we can attack ourselves. Is my bitrate pretty high? My bitrate isn't, no, my bitrate's at two megs. Don't know if anyone else is having issues with lag or, or seeing problems, but uh, yeah, my bitrate's not that great. In fact, I need to remember to go back in and fix uh, one of my video encoder settings. Uh, let's see, where did that go? And I'll fix it later. Um, there we go. Cool. Um, let's see. We need to do a few things. One, the combat action needs to process if anybody can still be attacked. Also, a list of char whoop, characters. I actually don't know why I'm even passing that in. I have this combat UI. I don't know why I think I need to pass more information in. So let's just leave it at that. Okay, target doesn't exist. Yeah, I know. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take that function that we commented out and just shift it around. Right, I didn't comment it out. I deleted the darn thing. Um, Here's our helper functions, of which we are going to, yeah. Uh, so you'll note that I deleted something and now I need it again. And I kind of shake my head about it a little bit, but it's not that bad. Mostly because uh, what I can do is, I can go into the combat window. And using tortoise, we can look at the diff and simply grab that function out of the diff, right? Here's the, the function I deleted. Here's the blank space, and now that we've got that blank space taken care of, I can just dump that there. Uh, this doesn't have to be public. In fact, that can be not void, but just not public. Uh, and that should be that. Uh, so, things to do. Um, if our target... I guess we should figure this out before we attempt to attack anything. Uh, so first off, we have all these possible targets. Uh, we need to make sure that there is an available target. 
in order to ensure that all the players are like not dead or not asleep. Uh, so I think the party has a function for this already. Obviously, I should double check this. Oh, okay, we can write a helper for this just to make life a little easier. Uh, is party alive? Because surprisingly, parties die a lot. Um, actually, unsurprisingly. For each player, in player characters, if their health is greater than zero, then we're going to simply return true. And if we get through everybody, then bad things. Okay. Uh, target still doesn't exist. That's fine. That is fine. Ooh, actually. I want to see that combat action helper again for a moment. This is not something that should actually be in here, come to think of it. Uh, if you look at the code that I just deleted, the ownership is actually not in this class. The ownership should probably be uh, somewhere in the party class. A lot easier from inside here to, uh, let's say, get random uh, a live player character. Uh, this is a lot easier to do from in here because we don't require as many reference calls to get to where we want to be. So, for example, characters, simply player characters this time. We don't even need this extra reference for anything. And I love how every time I copy and paste something, um, Visual Studio proceeds to uh, put a it, it proceeds to mess with my indentation on everything. Okay. Okay, so first thing that has to happen inside each of our process actions. If party uh, is alive, if the party is alive, if it's not alive specifically, uh, we're going to yield break. Yield break essentially tells a coroutine, stop, don't continue. It's kind of the equivalent of a return, but instead of returning, um, it instructs the system that there is norm no more code that should be uh, executed. Very helpful for that kind of setup. Um, and I know I'm going to be using this party reference more than once, so let's just grab the instance so that we don't have to keep digging through that singleton each time. Did I not make that function public? I didn't. Shame on me. Get random alive player character. It's a long function name. Also, get random living character. I like that better, at least for now. Get random living character, much better. All right, so if it's a single target, great, nice and easy. Um, if the attack target is multiple people, say it's the entire party. Really wish it would stop doing that. Targets is going to be equal to Party dot player characters. Uh, now we need to filter out the dead player characters just so we're not casting spells on those who are already down for the count. So let's put another helper in here. 
and just put get living characters. And this will be a player character array. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, guys. I totally do read chat. I just... My brain turns off. Sorry, Therena. Hey, and a name I recognize, too. Uh, am I just interested in true random? I was doing something similar and was looking for random within a subset that qualifies for a rule or something. Um, yeah, I, for now, true random works. Uh, what I actually do is I pick a random starting point and I cycle through the whole set. That's why you see my 4 in C equals 0. And then I look through literally every character for a workable solution. Uh, what probably should end up happening instead is uh, I should probably go so far as to um, have some kind of um, having people be able to generate threat maybe kind of do what MMOs do and say well the person dealing the most damage is going to be the one who uh, attracts the most monster attention, but then on top of that have things that modify the amount of threat. That might be one possibility. Also, random just kind of works, because there's only four characters. It's a little difficult for the player to tell if random is picking one character and beating the snot out of them, or if it's literally a true random. And eventually what we might want to do is come into the, uh, the monsters, and say each monster has a preferred target. So, uh, you know, the, the demons and imps love to eat magic-wielding characters versus, um, you know, your more bread-and-butter bandit might just attack everybody and anybody and kind of deal out the damage a little more evenly in an attempt to um, just kind of kill everybody. Stuff like that adds flavor. It's such a subtle bit of flavor, though, that sometimes uh, I, you know, I don't want it in here for the prototype stuff. I totally do read chat. I'm sorry, guys. I'm terrible at it, though. <laughs> I need to get something like um, like chatty going so that I can see clearly when somebody has said something and uh, I, I can read it. What I meant more was like saying a monster can only target melee monsters. Ah, I see. For now, everybody can attack, can attack everybody. Eventually, I'd like to add range to the system so that we have people at long range, short range, and then vice versa on the player character's side. You have a front row and a back row. The back row is somewhat protected, but the front row also tends to get a little more of the beating because of it. Yeah, so it, what you're describing, Threna, I definitely like that idea. Um, I just haven't had the time to toss it in yet. I haven't even had the time to get uh, group attacks put together yet. So um, that's kind of why I'm going through and getting this done. Um, I've never done this before. I attempted to try it. Uh, not enumerator, enumerable, enumerable. I haven't actually done an I enumerable stuff, stuff. Uh, but I figured this might be a good time to do it. And Microsoft's documentation is down. Like seriously, look at this. This service is unavailable. Thanks, Microsoft. Uh, let's go to this one. No, that's also down. Okay, I just, that's kind of crazy that that works out that way. Oh well, whatever. Um, Non-generic type. Right, we need to include generics in our collections, otherwise it has no idea what an I enumerable object that is generic is. Uh, and we are going to yield the player character that we're attached to. I actually don't need a starting point for this one either. So let's just not add this extra complexity in.
I heard my phone go off. Tends to mean somebody new has followed. Thank you to whomever that is. Uh, I'll actually look into possibly who it was in a moment. Come on, phone. Oh, no, it's people following me on Twitter. By the way, guys, I joined Twitter, just in case you haven't noticed or I haven't yelled it enough in the past few days. Uh, it's an easy way to figure out when I'm going to be on stream, when I'm going to be doing crazy things. Um, get... Did I not make that public either? I totally did. Oh, it's called Get Living Characters. Uh, so feel free, follow me on Twitter, and I will definitely be... Uh, tossing around uh, stream times and details such as when I'll be online on uh, days like Monday when I it's kind of difficult otherwise for me to uh, for me to let you guys know beforehand um, does that work? It looks like it works. Sweet. Uh, so link essentially allows me to say get living characters, which is an IE numerable, so I can do a for each on it if I really wanted to. And then what I could do from there is I convert that into an array. And that allows me to store the contents of that function return into targets. Woo! Anyway, um, my Twitter stuff is little more at this point than, uh, like, terrible puns, programming jokes, and when I go online. So, hopefully I don't make too much noise on Twitter if you're one of those people who likes a nice, quiet Twitter feed. Um, I'll probably ramp up a little more, uh, as I go, but for now, eh. Um... I'm just getting used to this idea of just, I don't know, talking online on a regular basis. <laughs> it's a weird thing. Uh, I'm definitely in need of getting used to uh, Twitter as a communication uh, thing. Which is funny, because you look at a lot of streamers, and it's not hard. Like, it me JP just talks constantly on Twitter. It's just a... a just a rolling movement of, of information. Uh, what is wrong with targets? Use of unassigned local variable. Ah, okay. Uh, one last thing here. If targets is null, then we're also going to break. Um, hmm. Targets. Use of unassigned. Well, yeah, of course it's on it. Fine. Now it's assigned. Happy? Good. <laughs> Sigh. Um. Yeah, that'll work for now. Um. So we already know the party's alive. We already know... Okay, cool. Just making sure this works. Looks good. Hey, Chakma and V-Player. More people joining in. Thank you guys for joining me today. It's always been, it always is good to have uh, more people. You guys kind of keep me motivated on those mornings when I don't feel like rolling out of bed, which is pretty much every morning. Um, you guys keep me in here, keep me chugging away on this game. And uh, I cannot say tell you guys how much I appreciate that. So thank you very much, uh, all of you. Not done yet, though. We've still got another 20 minutes to make sure that we can get... Uh, as much as we can chalked into uh, combat. Come on, compile on my code. Okay, so I can't help but notice that the standard attack target is self, and that seems like a terrible idea, is to allow self as a target. Let's just fix that on all of our monsters. 
Um, let's see here. Where is your attacking? Okay. You are a single, and you are single. Uh, actually, I kind of want to make swipe an entire party uh, kind of thing. He is kind of beefy. Hmm. So let's do this. Let's say that group, group, for lack of better words, is going to be actually, no. Okay. So here's that point I was talking about earlier today where spell target and uh, combat action target, um, where they start to diverge, di yeah, where they start to diverge, and as they diverge, uh, it now becomes uh, pretty evident that uh, what we're doing here requires some kind of um, different set of enumerations. So I'm going to keep, there we go, single party and party melee. Um, if I wanted to be more specific or less specific, I could say group and group melee, and we'll just switch combat target over here. Just so that when they go insane, they can do things like cast spells on their own group or um, do something like uh, cast, not cast, but like take swipes at their own uh, combat groups would maybe make the game a little more interesting in terms of insanity effects. Um, yeah, living melee characters. Uh, or get living uh, I'll call them front front row characters. Let's do a little bit of the range stuff right now. Since we're sitting in this system, we may as well. So... I'm going to take this function of, who's, of whom the brackets are all in the wrong place. Thank you, Visual Studio. Ooh, target restrictions. I do like the sound of that. Talk about can't have stray pointers in C Sharp? No, you can't. Thank goodness. That is one of the things that I gotta say. Um, as much as I love C++, oh my gosh, do I also enjoy uh, not having to fight with these things ever. All right, uh, yield play. And I see chat moving. I swear I'll look back over in a moment. <laughs> I'm getting good at at least seeing the, uh, the outer corner of my eye stuff. Yeah, I know you can technically do pointers in C Sharp. Trust me, I've used a fair number of them, uh, specifically when I was working with uh, breaking into Steam's stuff. But uh, the big thing there was that moving into unmanaged space is always a bit of a risk every time you do that. And I was never a huge fan of that risk, if I could help it. Um, there we go. All right, cool. So we've now picked out our targets. We've got particle, particle effects turning on. And then we also have for each character in the list that we are attacking with. 
we are then going to do the entire set of attempt attack, deal damage, move on. So, this should... Okay, single group and group melee. So, we're going to make that a group melee, and this will be single. Uh, this will continue to also be single, but now we're going to add a new attack in. And we're going to be... Um, Oh, what's the term I'm looking for? He uh, flails. And the hit bonus is going to be, uh, once again, pretty high, but the weapon damage is going to be almost meaningless. Um, there we go. Single target, and that'll be a group melee. Well, you know what? No, we'll just say that's a group. Uh, the animation, I believe, should be attack three. And I don't need a particle effect on that, at least not yet, not that I know of. Let's actually see how this works out, because I know now we've got some different characters with different attack types. I almost forgot it'd be silly if I killed something before they got a chance to attack. Okay, so basic swipe. Flails at the warrior, flails at the rogue, flails at the cleric. Yes, this is what I love. The fact that he can flail and go one, two, three, four is fantastic. Man, I'm actually kind of impressed that... So the only thing I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing the attack animation kick in, which means that I've probably misnamed the uh, attack for these guys. Uh, flails, it's attack three is what the... Uh, I'll let these guys finish their attacks. They're actually doing a number on the party. Um, okay, imp attack three. Should be using attack three. No, that, that's correct. Oh, but it has exit time checked. That's our problem. Okay, let's uh, go through and make sure all of these are turned off. So it has attack time essentially stops it from happening until... Uh... There we go. Here. Rogue, Cleric, let's heal the mage, because he's in shit shape, and dodge. There we go, we killed one, finally. Heal our mage a little bit. There we go. <laughs> now he just looks hilarious. That's amazing. Uh, wouldn't I want it to flail at everyone? I kind of do, but at the same time... I want to make sure that uh, it's obvious um, what's going on, that no information gets missed. Uh, granted, it's going to be pretty obvious pretty quickly when uh, you know the whole party starts dying as quickly as they currently are. Huh. Uh oh. Oh, I cast the wrong spell on the warrior. <laughs> I cast Firebolt instead of Heal. I thought I had selected Heal. I clearly selected the wrong spell. That is too good. Oh no. Okay, let's not screw this one up. Cleric, Heal Wounds, right? Heal Wounds is selected. Okay, good. Heal Wounds works. I just totally picked the wrong spell. Oh my god. Yeah, the Bob Ross game dev is pretty good. As I've said before, if you like that, you should also check out the Bob Ross eSports. That's another fantastic uh, Bob, Ross, Bob Ross reference written into uh, Twitter form. 
There we go. So I've got one more change I want to make before I call it. Uh, and that change uh, is that if the front row exists, I want to make sure I know. And the reason I want to know Let's just get all this in here is if the front row doesn't exist. Then you should be able to attack the people in the back row. Makes sense, right? If There we go. Pretty straightforward. Um, I could for loop this. I could clean it up a little. Mm. And because I'm a little nitpicky about my code, I actually am going to do that. Just so much easier to understand what's going on. And it doesn't hurt the readability or make it any less obvious. In fact, it does quite the opposite for me. It makes this a little more readable. There we go. All right. Looks good. I am tempted to make it try and flail everybody at once, but for now I'm gonna keep it separate. Um, if it becomes something of a burden and it takes way too long to attack everybody, then maybe I'll scale it back so that it's only an all-at-once attack that does a bunch of damage to a bunch of characters. But I want to make sure that the player doesn't miss any of the information. Combat is a lot of numbers kind of flying around, and I want to make sure that it's obvious to the player at all times what's happening and who's doing what, so that the player can learn during combat and then adjust if they need to. If they're taking too long and all the monsters are doing uh, these round robin hit everybody in the party attacks, then maybe they'll want to change from a defensive to a more offensive attack. Or if they notice, hey, people in the back row are getting hit, I might want to go so far as to actually be able to defend people in the back row. Um, ooh, that'd be cool. Hmm. Being able to defend people in the front or the back row. That's a neat idea. Maybe we'll get into that one tomorrow. So thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I'm definitely at that point where uh, I'm pretty much out of time. I can answer any questions you guys have before I take off. But otherwise, I'm going to sit here and play with this uh, free 3D model that I happen to get. And uh, I'll answer any questions while I fix it, because you'll note that it's got all kinds of things wrong with it. Uh, so I just need to probably mess with, yeah, it looks like the materials are wrong on it. Luckily, materials are easy to fix. Uh, lid. And also, let's turn off this light probe crap. I'm not a huge fan of light probes. You guys might be. That's great. I'm not a huge fan. Also, really? They have a floor shadow here? <laughs> they claim to have a floor shadow there, I'll tell you that. Let's get rid of it. Please have an option to disable the animations. 
like not being able to speed up round based strategy and wait for 15 units to move okay that actually is something that i don't think about much but i definitely will probably want for my own sanity sake when it comes to um just coding things and wanting it to work in a decently quick manner um so that's something i'll definitely want to keep in mind and i'll probably get done just for my own debugging purposes and then i'll leave it in as a uh, an option that players can mess with. Ooh, hello. Clearly missed a couple things here. Um, oh, I need a new material for this one. That's what's up. Oh, and I have different materials for some of these. Funny that it uses unlit. I don't like unlit. I like the Legacy Diffuse. Thank you very much. That looks a lot better. I was wondering why this looked so funny. Um, don't need that one. Ooh, or did I want that one? <laughs> uh, and let's get rid of that. The spider web. Spider web is actually fine. I just need to set it to the correct object in here. Also, inside shadow? No thanks. Uh, chest, oh, uh, spider web. There we go. Oh, that looks so much better. We're almost done. Yeah, nice to have it slow in the beginning, but if you're experienced, you always want to turn it off. Makes sense. And it's good to have player experience stuff like that in the game so that players know that you uh, not only understand where they're coming from, but also so that it's very obvious that, you know, if you want to mess with something or if you want to have that control, that it's possible to have the control without um, breaking things or messing with something. Gold bones. So the only thing I don't quite understand is why all these are in their own material. Gold, gold bones, and gold with gems. I'm guessing there's a slight offset in each of these that is causing them to... Uh, Where's that last missing one? One of you still has a... First off, you all have blend probes still turned on, so let's undo that. Secondly, one of you is still missing something. Spider web, spider web. Uh, really? Oh, you, you're the one who's missing it. Let's use this spider web material. There we go. That looks nice. Rob likey. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back online tomorrow, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. As I said before, please hit the follow button. It's great to have more people along for the ride. And if you want to make sure you never miss a stream, uh, then go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I tend to announce the weird streams on there more than anything else. Uh, also, one final thought. Um, final thoughts gone. I had it. It was there. I promise. I just, um, uh, give me a moment. Maybe it'll come back to me. Or maybe not. That's, that's a possibility as well. Um, yeah. Brain, I would appreciate not forgetting things like this. Oh well, I'll remember it some other time. I'm sure it was obviously not terribly important if I don't remember it now. Uh, thanks again, guys, for joining me. Hope you have a great day. I'll probably remember it the moment I turn the stream off. Meh. That's what Twitter's for, right? You just say things. Weird. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks for joining me. Oh, I remember. Ha! Um, a lot of my VODs have been removed from Twitch because I accidentally let my Turbo subscription uh expire so if you want to keep up on all the vods in the archive you'll want to actually go all the way out to the youtube channel that's linked below there you go got it all have a great day take care of yourselves see you tomorrow bye -o.